Hey everybody, greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and today I'm going to do a video review. Mr. Thrive and Survive just put out this video debunking gravity, so I thought I'd have a look at it and maybe uh, put a few comments up. I'm thinking that we may encounter a few logical fallacies, so let's go over those as well. If I was able to give you a formula that was able to determine exactly what would happen in a shadow some of the time, but not all of the times, would you take that formula and just go blindly about and say, hey, if you do this with a certain object and you put a light at a certain angle using this formula, it will always come out to look like this. But not always. Let's just say maybe under the right perfect conditions it'll work, but eh. You know, there, there's so many exceptions, you really can't use the formula. Would you actually stake your life on that formula? Would you call it a great formula? No, I'd actually say that formula kind of sucked. It's not something that sounds like it's been properly vetted or reproduced or repeated and refined uh, to the point that we could actually use it. And I'm talking about light and shadow here. See how light and shadow has created the illusion of a man's face? Well, that is exactly what gravitation and gravity and all that bunk has created. It has created the illusion that the masters that run this world and high places have wanted you to believe. Okay, so here we go with the first major logical fallacy, that of a false equivalence. We have a formula that doesn't work versus one that's been thoroughly vetted to the point that it is now a scientific theory. We also have the unknown powers that be that are hiding this ultimate truth from us. And I'll tell you, we can always, always now go to the idiocy of some of the comments and get real truth. Let's take a look. Here's the video I did yesterday, and I will link to it for the fact that this video will get old and people might want to go back and take a look at it. So anyway, subs can't work on a ball revisited Glober doublespeak. And here's the comments. and We're going to take a look at a couple comments here. And here we go. It didn't take long, guys. I mean, this was probably within the first hour. The Vettel Waller. Whatever. Vettel Waller? Don't know. What's the formula for buoyancy? You know it's coming. I said the periodic table works pretty well. All right. Well, no, the periodic table doesn't work pretty well. He asked you for the formula for buoyancy. You're trying to talk about mass and gravity because that's your narrative, not his question. Uh, there is no formula for gravity. There is only acceleration computations, which in no way identifies the forces involved. i got to edit that. I don't know where honey buns came from. <laughs> uh, see, sometimes I talk my replies into my phone, and uh, I don't pick up on mistakes it makes. Anyway. Check this out. Duncan McNeil, Mr. Thrive and Survive. Here's the formula for gravity. F equals GM over big M divided by R squared, or R raised to the second, seems to work. Hmm, does it now? Hmm. Well, we shall see. Well, yeah, that's Newton's formula for gravity. That's the force of gravity equals big G, the gravitational constant times the mass of object 1, the mass of object 2, divided by the radius or the distance squared between them. That's pretty straightforward to me. Then we get a reply back. You can't even write the formula, you poor snowflake. You just can't acknowledge anything that would bust your delusion. That's hilarious. Well, let's take a look at how hilarious this is. Force, okay, uh, without even getting into these, what is this r squared? Huh? What is this right here? That's the radius of the r squared. That is an assumption that cannot be proven. Well, no, that's actually the radius between the two masses, or the distance between the two masses squared. In fact, sometimes it's referred to as d squared. However, since you brought up the radius of the Earth, I can think of three ways to calculate that right off the top of my head. The first way is to calculate the drop between two objects uh, a certain distance apart, and from that you can use the curve calculator to calculate the radius of the Earth. 
The second is to use the method of Eratosthenes where you calculate the uh, shadow length of a stick uh, and compare it to the shadow length of another stick at a distance away. And the third way would be to use a sextant to find the latitude of two different locations a set distance apart and then use that to calculate the circumference of the Earth. The math is nothing that a standard issue 12 year old couldn't handle. Yeah, they try to prove it with circular mathematics. Well, you know, we can tell the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the difference in the, uh, uh, from the sun, the distance from the sun and the arc of, of this. And you see, you're assuming the distance to the sun, but they use a circular argument. You can look into that at some point. If you really check it out, it's all bunk. It's, it's mathematical hocus pocus magic. So let's take a look at the formula of gravity, shall we? Well, if you do a Google search, you will find that this is also the formula for gravity. Uh, and you'll also find that this is the formula of gravity. Do you see the radius of the Earth anywhere in this one? Well, truthfully, I didn't see the radius of the Earth in the other one. I saw the distance between the two objects, and in this case, it's abbreviated D. Wait a minute. You do know that both of those formulas are the exact same formula. They're just written a little differently, right? Hmm. Well, this is the force of gravity. Oh, then you have this thing right here, uh, and I'll read this to you. F grav represents the force of gravity between two objects. This little symbol here means proportional to, proportional to, now we're going to read the top line, the mass of the object of the first object over the uh, times the mass of the second object divided by the distance separating the object centers. Now let's get serious for a second here. You do understand that one is a proportion, the other is an exact number because it has G in it, right? It's like saying that if I press on the gas on my car, I go faster versus telling me what speed I'm going to be by pressing the gas a certain amount. You do understand that difference, right? 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 So what this is really saying is if you have the mass, which is just molecular weight, that's why I said peri periodic table. So let's, take, let's say we take a gram of, um, oh, I don't know, carbon, and put it next to a gram of helium. What do you think would happen? It's saying that, see, this is really, it's proportional to the distance between them. So the closer you put that, heal, or the, that hydrogen to the carbon, the more they will attract. What utter bunk. Just to make this clear, this is what is called the logical fallacy of argument by gibberish. This has nothing to do with a periodic table or molecular weights or carbon or hydrogen or helium. This has to do with the overall mass of objects. That's what the M stands for. If you're going to talk about an equation, you should really understand what the equation says. But now you got people here that they know what gravity is. Now, I implore you, please search for the formula of gravity. You will get thousands of different formulas and different variations. Did you know that Newton, if I remember my history right, and I could be wrong, but if I remember my history right, Newton filled an entire large book with formulas and mathematical equations trying to describe gravity, and he died without coming up with any kind of valid formula that worked. No, Newton filled an entire book with equations that were derived from his gravity constant. Things like buoyancy and the characteristics of artillery shells and how to build boats and even airplanes eventually. If you had actually read the book, you would have realized that it wasn't an entire volume of scribbles trying to come up with this one equation. All that work was in vain. Why? Because gravity is a made-up force, and it doesn't work. But here we have, they'll admit, there's problems with Newton. And they say there's a problem with the proportion, uh, proportion to in, uh, inertial mass. And they, they give these whole things, and they talk about how Mercury doesn't follow the formula. Well, there's a lot of things that don't follow the formula. Now, once again, this is you not understanding what you're looking at. Yes, there was a problem with Mercury, 43 arc seconds. Now, an arc second on Earth is 109 feet, and that's an error per century. Overall, that's pretty good, but they wanted to make it better. That's what science does. So then here comes 
da -da -da, Einstein to the rescue. And here's his formula, okay, which he has, says that, like this, imagine this being the Earth, okay, things actually are, because it curves space and time, things will spiral in towards it. Haven't you seen that demonstrated? Let's take a look at that demonstrated, shall we? And see how utterly ridiculous that is. Again, imagine this is the Earth, this is the moon going around. Okay? All right, I'll link to this video too, so you can uh, show other people the utter stupidity of what they're, what they're teaching are either high school or college students. Uh, just utter ignorance. And I'll show you why you can sh see why it's utter ignorance. This is Einstein and how everything works with um, planetary um, gravitational pulls and gravity wells that they produce. Uh, masses that are in space. So let's just take a look. He's going to take a bunch of marbles and he's going to throw them in two different directions on this gravity well. And it's going to demonstrate how the gravity well causes these to accelerate as they come in, decelerate as they go out, and they actually they spiral into the center. Note the spiral. Here we go. Look at them spiraling in all kind of different directions. Please note that. They're not all going straight up and down. All kind of different directions spiraling in. There is absolutely no demonstration at all that we could show in space to say that this works. Absolutely none. No evidence. Well, the evidence is that's the way it works in the universe. And we can easily measure it to confirm that it works that way. You do realize that that rubber cloth sets up friction, right? That friction slows down the marbles and causes them to fall into the center. Now, you want the proof of that? Let's take a look at this. See, our education system has gotten everybody out of critical thinking. Everybody is into just absorb what they tell you, do not question, and move on. So we can actually apply critical thinking skills that we had when we were born that was knocked out of us by the school system. Here is evidence that we have every night in our skies, when the moon's in our skies, that the gravity well BS is just that BS. Remember all those spiraling in? Okay, all those impacts from craters that were coming in because of the gravity well of the moon, right? Well, what do you notice here? Do you see any skid marks next to these craters? Hmm? Or did they all seem to impact straight up and down? Every single one of them. Okay, a couple of things you don't seem to understand about craters. First, they are high impact. So high, in fact, that when the meteorite or asteroid hits, it explodes. That blows a nice round hole in the surface of the moon, which fills with molten rock. That layers out, it forms a level surface on top because it's a liquid and hardens. Now, as a side note, if you put a spirit level in there, it would read level all the way through it, even though it's domed and on a sphere. Now one other thing that you didn't apparently do before you prepared this presentation was actually look at the moon. You see Tycho? It's the large crater down there at about the six o'clock position. You see the light colored lines that come out from it? They almost look like they're more concentrated on the right than they are the left. That's because when the asteroid hit the moon there, it came from about the 7 o'clock position and blew all that material out to the right. But you already noticed that, didn't you? And we have all this technology today, our cameras, binoculars, telescopes. We can all zoom in in any part of the moon and we will see that there's absolutely no impact crater evidence that came in from any angle, if they were even made that way, other than straight up and down. The evidence is right here. Einsteinian gravity is utter bunk. And if you want to get a little bit deeper, actually, I'm not going to. There's something else you can determine from critical thinking, but I won't do it here because everybody will hit on that. Hopefully you got the point. And again, do a search for gravity or gravity equation and see what you got. So when these idiot trolls... Oh, you can't, you can't put down the equation for gravity. Neither can you. Not unless you list all 3,000 of them that will easily show up. 
and all the different variations. Why don't you just publish the entire Newton book where he, he failed to do it? And a lot of Einstein's gravitational equations depend on the speed of light being a constant. And we know it's not. And before you even act so ignorant as to say the speed of light is not changing or cannot change, do a search for the speed of light slowing down. You will get some hits. Unless they've taken those off too. Do a uh, duck, duck, go search. Google is getting rid of all the evidence. Take care, guys. More to come. Well, for somebody that likes to berate others for not using critical thinking skills, I don't think you demonstrated a whole lot here. You didn't do the basic research you needed to do this presentation. You don't appear to have an even passing understanding of the formulas. Light indeed does have a constant speed in a vacuum. There are other speeds in other materials, and that's how things like eyeglasses and prisms work. And as a matter of fact, they have published Newton's book. You could have actually looked at it before you did this. Now, yes, there are two basic formulas for gravity. Newton describes the force of gravity. Einstein describes the cause of gravity. They are both related. We can use derivations of those formulas to do everything from weigh the Earth to calculate orbits. And by the way, we also use derivations of that to calculate the formula for buoyancy, which you, my friend, have not provided yet. So if you would be so kind, if you get a chance to look at this video, why don't you go ahead and write the formula for buoyancy in the comments so that we can all see it. Well, thank you very much for your attention. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Please remember to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Take care. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Bye.